Okay, it's time for me to show you my big ass. List. <laughs> big ass list, sorry. <laughs> Gotta be careful and put the emphasis on the right words or we could end up with an awkward moment. one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade coming at you today with part one of my two-part grand finale of my end of the decade spectacular-ish my week-long salute to my favorite music of the 2010s. Uh, today is uh, the first half of the big one well the first two-thirds-ish of the big one my ranked list of my 100 favorite albums of the 2010s. Uh, today I'll be taking you from number 100 through number 31 on the list. Tomorrow will be t the top 30 the grand finale. But uh, I hope you stick around for this one as well, even if you really just want to know my top, top picks. Because uh, this list is going to be full of interesting stuff. Stuff that I think is worth a listen. Hey, if they're in my 100 favorite albums of the decade, they're worth a listen, honestly. So uh, yeah, you may find a bunch of stuff in here that you've never heard of and uh, might be willing to try. Uh, I don't know how much I'll be talking about each uh, album because I obviously want to uh, walk the line between making this video too long and making it too short. Uh, I've got, you know, 70 albums to cover in this list, so I want to get through them as quickly as possible. Uh, plus, it'll be kind of interesting uh, how much I have to say about each album, because some albums, as with music, one of the beautiful things I think about music is sometimes you don't know why you love an album, you just love it. So you can't really give any reason, in words anyway. Uh, but yes, this is the most uh, daunting and biggest list I've ever attempted on this channel. I was able to do it, fortunately, before I it drove me completely nuts. Now, uh, before I get into the actual list here, just a couple of quick little notes. Uh, first of all, this list is not meant to be all-encompassing, far from it. Uh, for one thing, I couldn't listen to everything that came out in the past decade. Uh, I wouldn't have the time and I wouldn't have the, have the money. And also, there's plenty of music out there that I just didn't care for, for whatever reason. Uh, you're going to find some, well, more to the point, you're not going to find some things on this list that uh, a lot of other critics had on their year-end or decade-end lists that they just absolutely raved about. Probably the most notable example would be To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. I did listen to it. I'll give it that. I did listen to, well, the first two-thirds of it, and I just could not get into it, uh, unfortunately. I'm sad to say. I don't know why. And uh, also, this list uh, should not be taken in any way as being definitive or authoritative. Uh, this kind of goes along with the uh, all-encompassing sort of thing. Uh, the titles on this list and their rankings are not determined by any critical criteria such as innovative production or melodic inventiveness or lyrical profundity or even cultural impact. They're simply just the albums released between January 2010 and December 2019 that I most enjoyed. That's the essence of this list. That's why I call it my favorite albums instead of the best albums. So also one final note here. In the interests of making this list as real as possible, I didn't impose any arbitrary limits on the number of albums per artist that you'll find on this list. Some critics like to do that just so that they don't show any obvious favoritism toward uh, a favorite artist, even if it is a favorite artist of theirs that they listen to obsessively. But uh, at the same time, I tried to strike some kind of a balance. I did my best to include as wide a range of what I listen to regularly as I could. Uh, plus, as with any list, bear in mind it is subject to change depending on my mood. You know, list making, as I said before, is uh, much more of an art than it is a science. Uh, so the further away from number one we are on this list, the more approximate the rankings are really meant to be. Tomorrow or two days from now, I'm going to feel differently about probably half the items on this list than I feel today. So anyway, with all that gobbledygook out of the way, let's get on with my list. Kicking off my list at number 100 is The White Album by Weezer. Yes, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one uh, or the other Weezer album on my list. Two of them made the list, uh, except to say that I got into them pretty close to the end of the decade, so if I'd gotten into them earlier, I'd probably have more to say about each of the albums and more of them would have made my list in higher positions. Number 99 is Music is Better Than Words by Seth MacFarlane. This was his first album and uh, it really, really struck me at what a gorgeous voice he has and the off-the-beaten-path song choices, some of the more uh, obscure songs that he put on here. Uh, plus there's a guest shot by Sarah Bareilles on this album, so that only upped its game for me. And uh, this one made me a loyal fan of Seth MacFarlane and especially his musical talents. At number 98, we have Swings Both Ways by Robbie Williams. Now, I'm not the hugest Robbie Williams fan, uh, but this one caught my eye because of the array of guest performances on here. Rufus Wainwright, Kelly Clarkson, and Michael Buble, amongst others. And this one, this one, he basically covers all sorts of uh, old standards, kind of like he did with his uh, 
swing album or earlier on in his career. Great, great stuff. I love it. At number 97, we have an album whose title is kind of appropriate for the times we're in right now, Alpocalypse by Weird Al Yankovic. Honestly, could I not have both of the albums Al put out in this decade, both on my list of 100? Of course not. Uh, this is uh, not by far his best album, but uh, still, you know, as I said, I couldn't not have both of his albums on my list this year. Uh, Perform This Way, his parody of Lady Gaga's Born This Way, kicks this album off, and uh, it's pretty much nonstop fun from there. So yeah. Taking the number 96 spot on my list is Shawn Mendes' self-titled album. Yes, cringe if you will, but uh, the reason this one is on my list here is uh, it's the first album that I really, it really made me take notice of Shawn Mendes as being an artist with possible long-term potential. Uh, as, an, as an adult artist. You know, before this I didn't really take him seriously. He was much more of a teen pop kind of thing. But uh, In My Blood and Youth Featuring Khalid are uh, the two songs that most made me really sit up and take notice as, uh, you know, and take him seriously as an artist. Coming in at number 95 is Colored by Priscilla Renee. This is just a gorgeous set of uh, jazz and soul-inflected R&B. Just a fantastic album that uh, Kyle over at Track by Track made me take notice of. It was one of his highest at ranked albums in its year, and just I just absolutely love it. Coming in at number 94 on my list is Songs of Innocence by U2. Now, I'm not the biggest U2 fan in the world. Uh, I actually uh, didn't really start listening to their studio albums until pretty recently this decade, but uh, it was Noah that turned me on to this one, and it's one of his favorite albums, and I really can uh, could see its charms. Volcano was one of my, uh, the songs that grabbed my attention instantly. It's just a, a really, really good album, not to be missed. For number 93, we have Cheek to Cheek by Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga. Okay, not only am I a huge fan of Tony Bennett, uh, he's one of my favorite classic uh, traditional pop singers, but I could not resist picking this one up and giving it a try just to see if Lady Gaga was really capable of, uh, you know, stepping outside of her uh, contemporary pop comfort zone, and this album rewarded my ears uh, quite contently. Wonderful. At number 92, we have Megan Trainor's debut album, Tidal. What can I say? This might be uh, fans and critics' least favorite of her albums, but, you know, between All About That Bass and uh, Lips Are Moving and Dear Future Husband, I couldn't resist it. it. This is the album that made me a Megan Trainor fan practically for life. Number 91 on my list is Night Visions, the debut album by Imagine Dragons. Now, just as much as with the music, for me this one holds a soft spot in my heart for the way I found it. Uh, I was just at Walmart one day getting groceries and walking through the uh, music and movies. I saw this CD on the racks. I had never heard of the band before, and just the name of the band, Imagine Dragons, just sparked some curiosity out of me. So I went ahead and picked it up, and the rest is history. It's a great album. Occupying the number 90 slot on my countdown is Six String Theory by Lee Rittenauer. Now this one came out back in 2010, but I didn't stumble upon it until last year or 2018, but I am so glad I finally did. Uh, the number of guest artists on this album is just, just for one thing, is absolutely astonishing. George Benson, B.B. King, Keb Mo, Johnny Lang, I mean, the list goes on. It's just an absolutely fantastic album and such a variety of sounds on this one. If you like instrumental, guitar work, electric guitar, check this album out. You've got to. Number 89 is Dream a Little Dream by Pink Martini and the Von Trapps. Now, I've really come to adore Pink Martini, especially in the last few years. Uh, for one thing, they just absolutely pack their albums with songs sung in so many different languages. Uh, German, Japanese, French, Portuguese, Spanish, and the list goes on. And on this album is, is an especially a treat because they collaborate with the Von Trapps, who are the grandchildren of Maria Von Trapp, the uh, singer featured in the, mu the movie The Sound of Music. So this is just an absolute treat, uh, wonderful, and it certainly doesn't hurt that the title track is one of my favorite songs from the 60s of all time. Number 88 on my list is Neon Tree's third album, Pop Psychology. Uh, these guys are just absolutely great. If you love uh, 80s inspired synth pop, let's face it, the music is as color colorful as the cover art is on this one. Uh, just a lot of great tunes, love in the 21st century, and sleeping with a friend and just the list just goes on just check out this album if you love 80s drenched synth pop kind of stuff check them out number 87 is staying at tomorrow's the sophomore album by george ezra now i was pretty sure it wasn't going to get as good as his debut album but uh, this one came pretty close closer than i would have expected it to but i just i love this album so many great songs on this album uh, pretty shining people uh, getaway and shotgun and just so many more great great songs wonderful album Coming in at number 86 is Avicii's debut album, True. 
Now, who would have thought that you could have ever fused EDM and country music? But somehow Avicii managed to pull it off and scored some of the biggest hits of the 2010s uh, off this album. And in some ways, I think he kind of uh, made a little bit of an inroad for Lil Nas X with uh, his hit uh, Old Town Road. So there you go, a fantastic EDM album right here. My number 85 pick is the self-titled debut album by The Hot Sardines. This is a throwback jazz group. Uh, they, they do song stylings from the 40s and 50s, kind of swing and Tin Pan Alley stuff. This is just absolutely gorgeous. And uh, this was actually a discovery that I found at Skips uh, back when it first came out. I saw it on the new releases shelf. I'd never heard of them before, didn't know what the heck kind of stuff it was, although you could kind of tell by the cover. So I picked it up without ever knowing what it is and bought it just on the off chance. and. It ended up becoming one of my favorite albums. Number 84 on my list goes to Western Stars by Bruce Springsteen. Uh, yeah, Springsteen goes country. Uh, in some ways you wouldn't think it would work, but in other ways it just seemed like a completely natural fit for him. And another thing, this album kind of elevates the work of an album to another level. I mean, the songs individually might not be catchy or particularly ear-grabbing, but in the whole cohesive format of the album, it's an absolute, it's practically a masterpiece. Number 83 on my list is Cote d'Azur by the Rippingtons. Now, the Rippingtons are a, my favorite contemporary jazz band of all time, so I pretty much couldn't let the decade go by without putting at least one of their albums on my list. And uh, they try to put uh, a theme to each one of their albums, and as you can kind of tell by the cover and title of this album, the theme for this one is songs inspired by the Mediterranean coast of France, uh, which, which also holds a soft spot for me. I have a soft spot for the French, so I couldn't, uh, couldn't not love this album. It's fantastic. My number 82 favorite album of the decade is Standing on the Rooftop by Madeleine Peru. Now, I've really, really grown to love her, especially in the last three or four years. Just a fantastic, wonderful jazz chanteuse with an absolutely gorgeous voice, a little bit of a smoky voice, and uh, the songs are just wonderful. Uh, Martha, My Dear is one of the better, better ones on here, and some of the song titles she comes up with are pretty uh, interesting. Don't Pick a Fight with a Poet is one of the songs on this album. So, uh, in my opinion, you really can't miss with any of her albums at all. So, if you like jazz vocals, give Madeleine Peru a try. Coming in at number 81 is Paradise Valley by John Mayer. Now, my sister was a huge fan of John Mayer, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to pick this one up and give it a try. But also, uh, appearances by Katy Perry and Frank Ocean certainly don't hurt at all. Uh, yeah, you would, you would think that, kind of like with Springsteen, uh, John Mayer going country-ish wouldn't really work, but in a way, it's kind of a natural fit for him. And also, the co-production by Don Was definitely uh, helps this one as well. So, very, very good album. Much better than I expected it to be. Number 80 is Take Me When You Go by Betty Who. Now, one of the songs on here, Somebody Loves You, went viral on YouTube when it was used in a marriage proposal video. And that's what kind of brought her to my attention. And she's an Australian singer who uses a lot of synths in her music. So if you like synth pop with a female vocalist, you're just going to love this one. Uh, she kind of reminds me of a cross between Pink and Megan Trainer in a way. So yeah, um, if you like either of those artists, uh, don't miss out on Betty Who if you haven't listened to her yet. My number 79 pick is Days Are Gone, the debut album by Haim. Yeah, this is one of the higher profile albums uh, on my list. It's, you know, if you've probably heard of it, you probably know some of the songs off of it. If I Could Change Your Mind is my favorite off of here. And uh, yeah, this had just has so many great songs and it kind of uh, made me pay attention to the band and I eagerly awaited their sophomore album also. So yeah, great album here if you haven't heard it. Coming in at number 78 is Shouted Out by Hanson. Yes, this is another band that I pretty much couldn't let the decade go by without putting at least one of their albums on my list and for this decade, this is it. Uh, if you think that they peaked with Mbop at the beginning of their careers, think again. Give a listen to this album. Some great, great tunes on here that really show their maturity. Uh, ever since their sophomore album, they really started maturing. Uh, Kiss Me When You Come Home is one of the best songs uh, out of their entire discography. And Voice in the Chorus is another fantastic one. So yeah, give Hanson a try if you haven't checked them out, especially uh, since their very early days. At number 77, we have the self-titled debut album by DNCE, another fairly high-profile album that uh, most of you have heard about. Some great, great, great dance pop here uh, with the uh, lead vocals by Joe Jonas, uh, Cake by the Ocean, we all know that song, and that's, the, the hits don't stop there. It's just a wall-to-wall -wall great tunes on this album. Number 76, for me, is Wallflower by Diana Krall. Now, for those of you who know Diana Krall, this might be an odd choice, you would think, because on this album she took a bit of a left turn where she covered the more contemporary rock and pop songs, like from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, rather than the American st songbook standard stuff that she uh, usually does on her albums. But uh, 
in some ways that's one thing that made this album stand out for me and I, I just loved it. I mean, honestly, even a bad Diana Krall album is still a darn good album. And she also has appearances from uh, Vince Gill, Michael Bublé, and Sarah McLaughlin and others on this album, So and Brian Adams. So that just notches it up a little bit more for me. So wonderful album by a wonderful vocalist. At number 75, we have What Happens Next by Joe Satriani. And kind of like Weezer, this is another artist whom, if I had come in on him uh, earlier on in the decade, there would probably be more albums on this list and higher ranked albums. But uh, hey, as it is, he's got two spots on this list, uh, like Weezer does. Just, yeah, fantastic instrumental guitar rock. I just love it. I can't say enough good things about Satriani. Uh, you you got to check him out. If you love great, you know, muscly guitar rock instrumental stuff, check him out. My number 74 pick is Wrong Crowd, the sophomore album by Tom O'Dell. And you saw him in my uh, favorite artists of the decade list. He's he's up there. And this album demonstrates why. I mean, just some great, great songs on here. Uh, Magnetized. Uh, Sparrow is my absolute favorite song on this album, as well as uh, another song called Entertainment. I mean, it's just uh, packed with great songs. And his voice is just amazingly uh, unique and idiosyncratic. As some people might not like idiosyncratic voices, but I just love them. So yeah, I can't say enough good things about this album. His Tom O'Dell is just fantastic. Coming in at number 73 on my list is Born This Way by Lady Gaga. I mean, honestly, just because of the title track, that self-empowerment anthem, one of the biggest anthems of the decade, uh, that's, that alone justifies its ranking on my list. But also so many other good songs, uh, You and I, The Edge of Glory. I mean, the list goes on. So yeah, it's a wonderful album. What can I say? Number 72 on my list is Unorthodox Jukebox by Bruno Mars. Now, first of all, how could I not love that title? I mean, I don't know who came up with it, but it's a stroke of genius. But also some of the best songs of the decade on here, Locked Out of Heaven and When I Was Your Man in particular, uh, just make this a standout album and show you why Bruno Mars is the man. Okay, this next one, you've probably been wondering when his name was going to show up on my list. Number 71 is Amory by Wouter Hamill. This is his fifth album, and it was just absolutely wonderful. It was well worth waiting for. Uh, a bit of a disappointment from his previous album, which uh, that pr pretty much couldn't be helped, but still a lot of great tunes on here. Stray Cat is one of the is the first track on here. It's great. Hey Now is my favorite al uh, song off the album. It's another great self-empowerment anthem, kind of right up there with Born This Way by Lady Gaga. It's just a wonderful album by one of my favorite artists of all time. My 70th favorite album of the 2010s is Culture Vulture by Snarky Puppy. Now, I can't remember how I found out about these guys, but I am so glad that I did. Uh, this is some just great uh, instrumental folk rock jazz, I guess you'd say. Uh, it's just kind of the kind of stuff you just have never heard before from anybody else. And uh, this album won the Grammy for Best Contemporary Instrumental Album, I believe, in its year. So, and, and it, it stands to reason. I mean, this is just great, great stuff. you got to hear it. Number 69 on my list is Tribute, the debut album by John Newman. Now this guy, he, he's got a little bit of an idiosyncratic voice, a little slightly strange voice. Uh, there I go again with the idiosyncratic voices, what can I say? I love it, but this voice is absolutely made for the soul-inflected pop tunes that are on this album. It's just, uh, he, he's in his wheelhouse, I've got to say, vocally on here. Uh, it's just, just, you know, some fantastic stuff. It, a little bit like Sam Smith, but uh, Sam Smith is a little bit more ballad-heavy than this guy. But uh, still, I mean, this guy's just, he's just not to be missed. If you like uh, a unique voice and great soul pop tunes, check out John Newman. Number 68 on my list is Some Nights, the sophomore album by Fun. And yes, it's fun. Uh, what can I say? It's some great pop rock tunes. Uh, you guys probably know this album already. Uh, the title track, as well as Carry On and We Are Young featuring uh, Janelle Monae. Just, some, uh, just a great collection of great pop rock tunes. What can I say? Number 67 is More Than Just a Dream by Fitz and the Tantrums. And this album was actually my first exposure to the group. I just, I just thought it was fantastic. It definitely left a good first impression on me. And I've been a follower of, of theirs uh, ever since. Great, great pop album. Coming in at number 66 is Everything Will Be Alright in the End by Weezer. This is the highest ranked Weezer album in my countdown, spoiler alert. Uh, but yeah, as, as I said with the uh, other choice, uh, if I'd been exposed to Weezer earlier on in the decade and had listened to them more, they, there would probably be more albums and higher ranked albums in my list. But still, this was, in my opinion, their best of the decade, and it's only going to grow on me over the years. My number 65 favorite album of the decade is Wonderful Crazy Night by Elton John. And yes, I wanted to rank this one higher just because I love Elton John. But, you know, there were just so many darn good albums this decade that, uh, that this, that's as high as this one got. Uh, still, though, he he's just delivers some great songs on here, co-written with Bernie Taupin. Uh, I believe his first collaboration with Bernie Taupin in quite a while. 
I might, might be mistaken there, but still, some excellent, excellent songs on here, and a very uh, worthy addition to my collection, and a worthy spot on this countdown. Number 64 on my list is Gone Now by Bleachers. Yes, I know there might be some people out there who might be disappointed at how low this album ranked in my countdown, but, well, kind of like with Elton John, uh, there were just so darn many good albums in the past 10 years that that's as high as this one got. Uh, yeah, but it's only going to grow on me uh, over the coming years. I just can't imagine it not growing on me more, because, uh, uh, yeah, Bleachers, there's just something about Bleachers music that is just wonderful and endlessly likable. So, yeah, great, great album. Number 63 is Talking Is Hard by Walk the Moon. Yes, this is the album that got me into this group. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. One of the most 80s sounding 2010s albums you will ever hear. Uh, just uh, absolutely wonderful. And of course, you all know the huge, huge hit single off this album, Shut Up and Dance. And the great songs on this album do not stop there, trust me. Uh, just wonderful. I mean, you know, being an 80s kid myself, I couldn't help but absolutely love every track on this album. Just fantastic. Coming in at number 62 is Jake Bug's sophomore album Shangri-La, a, a wonderful and worthy and well worth waiting for follow-up to his debut album. Uh, this one is produced by Rick Rubin, and it really, really shows in the quality and uh, of wonderful songs on this album. Uh, if you like uh, singer-songwriters in the, in the vein of Bob Dylan, give Jake Bug a try. Uh, you will not be disappointed with this album, and, uh, or I, any of his others, really. At number 61, we have Jay Brannon and his album Rob Me Blind. Now, very few people know about this guy. Not a lot of people know about him. He's a great uh, indie rock singer-songwriter type of guy who's got uh, beautiful arrangements and very uh, snarky and uh, satirical and humorous, uh, darkly humorous lyrics in his songs, but they're juxtaposed against this gorgeous singing voice. He just has this absolutely angelic singing voice. So if you like stuff that's off the beaten path, that's kind of unexpected uh, in different ways, you've got to try out Jay Brannon. Uh, he is just not to be missed. I, I'm a big fan of his. Coming in at the number 60 spot on my countdown is Johnny Mathis with his album Let It Be Me, Mathis in Nashville. This is just an absolutely gorgeous album. As some of you may or may not know, Johnny Mathis is one of my all-time favorite uh, traditional classic pop singers, and this album absolutely does him justice. I was quite disappointed with uh, an album that came later on in the decade, but this one is just absolutely timeless. It's got a bunch of uh, traditional classic country songs on here, such as Crazy, which was uh, made popular by uh, Patsy Cline, and Let It Be Me, which was made popular by the Everly Brothers. Uh, Alison Krauss ac actually duets with him on that uh, on that song. Love Me Tender by Elvis Presley is another one that's on here. Just an, an absolutely fantastic album. Uh, my favorite of his of his from the decade. It's just cannot you cannot miss this album. Coming in at number fifty nine is Wonderful Wonderful by the Killers. Yes, it was a bit hard to choose the best album of the decade, for, uh, in my opinion, from this band, but this one won out. There are just a couple songs on here that spoke to me like uh, no songs on their other albums did. Uh, rut, for instance, uh, kind of is a per bit personal to me. Sometimes I feel like I'm in a rut with, uh, with life. Uh, the title track is fantastic also, and the closing track, Have All the Songs Been Written. Uh, I love songs about music, and that one was just wonderful. It just really struck with me. It, it was wonderful, wonderful. What can I say? My number 58 favorite album of the decade is Out of the Game by Rufus Wainwright. Yes, uh, Rufus, as you might know, is one of my favorite uh, art pop or Baroque pop artists, I guess you'd say, uh, since he started his career back in the late 90s. And uh, his one or two albums before this one kind of disappointed me. But this one, he kind of sprung back, and he was, well, in, as far as I'm concerned, he was back in the game with this album, rather than out of the game. It was produced by Mark Ronson, so that really, really stepped him up and uh, just kind of brought him back to my attention. Uh, just a fantastic album. Coming in at number 57 is one of the newer arrivals on my countdown. It is Cosmic Hallelujah by Kenny Chesney. Yes, I didn't really get into Kenny Chesney until a little over a year ago, maybe. And yeah, just heard one of his albums, uh, got it off the freebie shelf at House of Records, and I just started picking up more and more of his albums, one after the other, and this one just really, really shines uh, by far above the other ones. Uh, one of the more unique songs on this one is actually he's got a duet with Pink on this album. You wouldn't think it would work with Pink in a country setting, but it actually is a fantastic song. Their voices go really well together. And uh, another song that's got a great sense of humor is a song called Bucket. And then there's another song called Trip Around the Sun, which is kind of a philosophical sort of song that kicks off the album. So yes, uh, Kenny Chesney, Chesney is not your typical country artist, and this album really demonstrates that. Number 56 on my list is Leon Bridges' debut album, Coming Home. Now, as you may or may not know, I'm a big fan of 60s soul singer Sam Cooke. He was just one of my favorites from that era. 
and Leon Bridges just steps right up and fills Sam Cooke's shoes very, very nicely. Just has so much of Sam Cooke's style and the sound and everything is just to perfection. Uh, so I, I think Sam Cooke would be very, very proud of this album and I, I certainly really enjoy it. Just a wonderful, wonderful throwback soul. Filling the number 55 slot on my countdown is Michael Buble's album Nobody But Me. And Michael Buble's albums are always fantastic, uh, they always are, but uh, this one kicked it up a couple of notches for me because, uh, first of all, he has one of his uh, optimistic, bouncy original songs on here called Today Is Yesterday's Tomorrow, which caught my ear instantly, I just couldn't help it. And he also has a, a duet with Megan Trainer on this album, which is fantastic. And also, uh, as if that weren't enough, he covers the classic Beach Boys song, God Only Knows, which is one of my favorite songs from the 60s. So, yeah, that's what put this, puts this album on the list for me. My number 54 album of the decade is one of the last albums that was released in that decade. It is Fine Line by Harry Styles. Uh, I, I wanted to rank this one higher, but uh, it, I, I kept it kind of low. I kept the ranking kind of modestly because it was a, a very late arrival in the decade. But uh, yeah, if it had been released a year earlier, it would have easily been in my top 10. That's how great this album is. If you have not tried out uh, Harry Styles just because he's a One Directioner, listen to this album. It will change your mind. It was fantastic. I just realized the funny irony of where I ranked this album. I ranked it at a prime number, and as we all learned in school, you can get a prime number by multiplying any other two numbers together. Yes, my number 53 album of the decade is Multiply by Ed Sheeran. Uh, yes, for some reason it took me forever to get into Ed Sheeran, and I'm not sure why. Uh, there's just something about him that it took forever to grow on me, but uh, when he finally did, this is the album that uh, beat them all. And it's just, it's, it's Ed Sheeran in his prime. I mean, you can pick any song on this track list uh, and it's just wonderful. I mean, it's obviously Thinking Out Loud and Photograph are the two big hits and for good reasons. But yeah, just put this album on shuffle and you're gonna be greeted by one great song after another. At number 52 on my list is The Blessed Unrest by Sarah Bareilles. Uh, yes, the, the opening track, we all know that song. It was just an absolute smash hit. The song Brave, a great, great uplifting, uh, inspirational anthem, it's just fantastic. And the, the great songs don't stop there. I mean, it's just a uh, wonderful album from front to back. And yeah, as, as I mentioned, uh, she's an artist that I glommed onto at the very beginning with her first major label album, and uh, I didn't stop since then. So yeah, a great, great album here. Okay, this next one just narrowly missed my top 50, but it's still a fantastic, fantastic album. It is Random Access Memories by Daft Punk, uh, the, the band's best album ever, in my opinion. It's just fantastic. Uh, they, they really added a new dimension to their sound by introducing uh, organic or, you know, non-electronic instrumentation into their sound. And also the, the collaborators that they have on here, Pharrell Williams, Giorgio Moroder, and the list goes on. It's just, this was just a fantastic album. In my opinion, it was well deserving of the Album of the Year Grammy. And uh, honestly, I, I kind of wish I'd ranked it higher, but there was just so much good music uh, this past decade that, well, this is where it sits, but uh, don't let that uh, fool you. It's a still a fantastic album. Okay, here we go, starting in on the top 50, we have Sam Smith with his debut album, In the Lonely Hour. What can I say? This one uh, deserves the number 50 spot, honestly. It's just, it, it catapulted him into the big time for a good reason. Uh, Stay With Me was one of the biggest hits of the decade. And uh, another great, great song on here, one of my favorite songs on here is Like I Can. That's just a fantastic song. So yeah, uh, top to bottom, this album's just filled with wonderful first-rate songs. Uh, and a great artist, Sam Smith. Number 49 on my countdown is Torches, the debut album by Foster the People. Uh, again, just like Sam Smith, uh, another great, great debut album with one of the biggest hits of the decade, Pumped Up Kicks. And, uh, you know, that's, and as I said, you know, the, the songs don't stop there. The great songs don't stop there. Call it what you want. Don't stop. I mean, I could just go right down the track listing and it's just another great uh, synth rock song uh, after another on this album. Just fantastic. Coming in at number 48 on my list is Bloom, the sophomore album by Troy Sivan. And yet, like I said in my uh, Artists of the Decade video, Troy is kind of up there on my list of favorite artists of the decade, and uh, this album proves why. Uh, I, I could have easily ranked this one just as high as his debut album. Uh, this one has a few more catchy hooks on it, which makes it uh, stick in your mind a little bit uh, more easily. But his debut album was all about the atmosphere, and so, spoiler alert, that one's coming up uh, higher on my countdown. But yet, still, this one just uh, so many great catchy songs on here. My 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 is one of my favorites. Plum is probably my favorite song on the album. I'm not sure why. But yeah, just kind of put the track listing on a dartboard, throw a dart at it, and you'll hit a, hit a good song on here. So yeah, another great outing from Troy Sivan. My 47th favorite album of the decade is Taj Mo. It's a collaborative album between blues artists Taj Mahal and Keb Mo. 
and uh, this one took me by surprise. I would have expected this one to be, uh, judging by the dark background on the cover art and whatnot, to be a bit more of a traditional blues album, a little bit more depressing, but this one is uh, surprisingly optimistic and bouncy sounding, honestly. It just it's so many good songs on here. She Knows How to Rock Me is a, a great song, and another thing that adds points to this album is uh, the final song on the album, Ohm Sweet Ohm, uh, features Liz Wright in, in a guest appearance, and, and I've, I've liked her stuff lately too. So yeah, this one was a very, very pleasant surprise. Uh, uh, Taj Mo by Taj Mahal and Keb Mo. Coming in at number 46 on my countdown is Choreography by Bright Light, Bright Light. This is just a fantastic set of great upbeat synth pop stuff, as you can kind of tell by the cover art. It's just amazing. Uh, he gets a lot of help uh, on this album by uh, from Elton John and the Scissor Sisters, members of the Scissor Sisters, but he did not need it, honestly. It's just a won wonderful album. One super catchy, earwormy song after another. If you love great, probably more 90s inspired than 80s inspired synth pop, check out this album. It's just uh, amazing, fantastic. Coming in at number 45 on my list is Rocket by Edie Brickell and New Bohemians. Now, I was a little bit more than passingly familiar with Edie Brickell's earlier hits from the 90s, uh, so this was my first exposure to the group in quite a while, and it was kind of an impulse buy, honestly. I just, I, I kind of was intrigued by the cover art more than anything else. But uh, I was very, very pleasantly surprised by this one. Uh, it's just a great, great set of songs, and a bit more of an acoustic uh, edge, or a slightly folkish edge, uh, to the rock sound, which was kind of in line with uh, Edie Brickell's earlier stuff. Uh, Trust is my favorite song on the album, and uh, What Makes You Happy, the opening track is also really good. Superhero, track two, is also great. But yeah, just a, a fantastic album. My number 44 pick is The Other Side of Down, the sophomore album by David Archuleta. Yeah, in the first year of American Idol that I watched religiously, David Archuleta was the runner-up, and so and he was actually my favorite contestant that, that year. Uh, I loved his debut album, and so I was eagerly awaiting his follow-up, and I was not disappointed. It was, you know, at the same time, kind of in the same vein as his debut album, but also he had a little bit of artistic growth in it as well. So, yeah, it was, just, it was a worthy follow-up, and it was worth the wait. Number 43 is Doo-Wops and Hooligans, Bruno Mars' debut album. Uh, yeah, what can I say? This is one of the uh, defining albums of the decade, pretty much. Uh, Grenade and Just the Way You Are and uh, Talking to the Moon and Marry You. Just one great song after another, as is the case with a lot of these albums. So yeah, just uh, fantastic, and it really uh, established Bruno Mars as a force to be reckoned with, I think. My number 42 pick is George Ezra's debut album, Wanted on Voyage. Yes, he caught my ear instantly with his uh, very, very deep voice, and uh, you know, again with the idiosyncratic voices, and not to mention one great song after another on here. Uh, Cassio is, was one that caught my ear instantly, and Did You Hear the Rain was my, my favorite song off the album. It's just he had such a unique sound to him that uh, he's just, I, I, he, I was a fan of his instantly, and I'm already looking forward to his third album. Coming in at number 41 is The Origin of Love by Mika. And I've talked about this guy before. This was actually, I talked about this album in a Now and Then video with Mika's most recent album a few months back. Just, uh, yeah, go to that video for all you need to know about this album. It's just uh, fantastic. Uh, it uh, explains why Mika is one of my favorite artists of all time, as well as one of my favorite artists of the decade. My 40th favorite album of the decade is Tom O'Dell's most recent album, Jubilee Road, his third album. And uh, I did a review of this album uh, back when it came out. It's, uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. It proves why Tom O'Dell is, as with Mika, one of my favorite artists of the decade. Uh, my favorite song on this album is If You Want to Love Somebody, but uh, he has also got a duet with Alice Merton on this album, Half As Good As You. And I mean, the good songs are just, the good songs far outnumber the bad on this album. Uh, actually, there really aren't any bad songs on this album, trust me. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a great listen if you haven't uh, listened to it yet. It's worth the time. Check it out. Coming into the number 39 spot on my countdown is Kin by KT Tunstall. Now, I loved her debut album. Uh, it was a fantastic eye to the telescope. Uh, but honestly, after her rather disappointing to me sophomore album, uh, she kind of fell off my radar. I didn't pay any attention to her after that. So, And I'm not sure what caused me to check out this album. It was probably some of the songs I heard on YouTube. But I absolutely ended up loving this album. It brought me back to her in a big way. And uh, she takes on a bit more of a, a sunshiny, jangly sort of harmonic sound on this album, which I just love. Reminds me of uh, 60s stuff like uh, The Mamas and the Papas, particularly the song Everything Has Its Shape. That's my favorite song off the album. 
and uh, it took me so long to get here, but here I am. That's another uh, another great song on here. But yeah, one song after another on here is just fantastic. Check out this album. My number 38 favorite album of the 2010s is Silver Ball by Bare Naked Ladies. Yes, uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, and this is as high as they ranked in my countdown, unfortunately. Uh, yet, in my opinion, they're, they're far from their glory days of the 90s and early 2000s. But still, this is a really, really good album. It's got a lot of great stuff on here. Duct Tape Heart is a great song, as well as Here Before. Here Before is probably my favorite song on the album. But uh, yeah, they've, they've lost a little bit of their magic from uh, their, the early half of their career. But uh, still, the, you, you gotta hand it to them for keep on keeping on as long as they have. It's still a very, very good album. Making her second appearance on my list at number 37 is Sarah Bareilles with her album Amidst the Chaos. Yes, this was just fantastic and a real breath of fresh air. Uh, not that her previous albums were stale by any means, just uh, she kind of took a bit of a left turn on this one with a bit more of an acoustic uh, soul folk kind of a direction maybe, I guess. That's it's hard to categorize. But yeah, just a, a great list of songs on here. Armor is one of the uh, lead-off singles, I think, from the album. Just a fantastic uh, metaphor for female empower empowerment, uh, which is one of the overriding themes on this album. But yeah, just uh, I mean, yeah, stick a dart in uh, the track listing on a dartboard, and as I said, and you'll find just one great song after another. Just a wonderful, wonderful album. And also making his second appearance on my countdown is Wouter Hamill at number 36 with Lohengrin. And this one was, uh, as you can kind of tell by the cover art, this was a little bit more subdued than his two previous albums, but still a fantastic, uh, a bunch of great, great jazz-inflected pop on here. Just, you know, one song after another. What can I say? Uh, I should probably stop saying that because I've, I've been saying it enough. Uh, Demise and Juju, that was probably my favorite song on this album, as well as The Ballad Finally Getting Closer. Uh, and I could keep naming songs on here that are fant fantastic. Kings and Queens, another great, great song. Just, yeah... Uh, I can't stop talking about Wouter Hamill enough. Uh, I, I'm, I'm standing him at this point, honestly. Just, uh, just a great album, yeah. Coming in at number 35 is Adele with her album 25. Uh, yeah, and this one kind of surprised me with how high it ranked. I, I, I like this album. I, I didn't th think I loved it as much as I do, but in the grand scheme of things, when I looked at it and re-listened to it and stuff, it just it, it stood out. It was obvious that it needed to be uh, well within the top 50. As you guys know this album, I'm sure a lot of you know it, and you guys know the, the hit singles from this album are very, very worthy of the attention that they got, as is this album. So yeah, a fantastic outing by Adele. Uh, she's one of the preeminent pop stars of the 2010s. And coming in at number 34, we have yet another artist making their second appearance on my countdown, Joe Satriani, with his album Shockwave Supernova. And yeah, another fantastic, amazing outing by Joe Satriani, his great uh, instrumental electric guitar rock. Uh, it's just, you know, one amazing song after another, and each song has a different texture, which you th you'd think would be hard to do with instrumental guitar rock, but yeah. He keeps all of his albums interesting, and this one is no exception. And speaking of interesting, the uh, packaging on this album is just fantastic. Uh, that could be a video in itself with the great packaging on this album. And this was also noteworthy in that it was one of the last purchases I made at Skips during his going out of business sale. So, And it was well, well worth it. I, I would have paid a uh, full price for it, but I got it at a, at a discount. And it was just, it just paid for itself time and time again. Fantastic album. Number 33 on my list is All You Need Is Now by Duran Duran. And yes, uh, another one of my favorite artists of all time, and yet this album ranked outside the top 25. But what can I say? Uh, it, well, it's, it's kind of like with uh, Bare Naked Ladies. Their more recent stuff doesn't quite hold a candle, in my opinion, to the stuff from like the first half of their de of their career. But but still, this stuff is, is pretty darn good. I mean, a bunch of good songs on this album. Mediterranean is my favorite on the album. Uh, the title track, All You Need Is Now, as well as Leave a Light On. Uh, and uh, there's some other ones that I could pick out. Uh, just a, another very good album, uh, though not fantastic album, by Duran Duran. And as we close in on the bottom 70 of my list here, number 32 is 1989 by Taylor Swift. Uh, yes, this one actually, this is another one that kind of snuck up on me. It was originally not even on my list. It was down in my honorable mentions. But uh, as I had to do my uh, compulsory re-listening of a handful of the albums as I was finalizing my list, well, this one just snuck back up on me and reminded me how uh, expertly crafted all of the songs on this album were and uh, why it justifiably, in my opinion, walked away with Album of the Year at the Grammys. You guys know about this album, I'm sure you know the hit singles off this album. Some of you might think that it's overrated, but hey, I don't. It's number 32 on my list. It's just wonderful. Uh, 1989 by Taylor Swift is a fantastic album. 
Okay, now closing out this block of my favorite albums of the decade list at number 31 is Colors by Steve Appleton. Never heard of him, have you? No, you haven't. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that I haven't mentioned him. At least I don't think I've mentioned him until now on this channel. And uh, a funny story of how I discovered this guy, I'll have to talk, to, talk about that later, but uh, suffice to say, um, I, after hearing his debut album, I was eagerly awaiting this album, and it was worth the wait, and I was not disappointed when it finally came out. Um, you would think from listening to this album that, uh, you know, as uh, earwormy and catchy and sugary pop as these songs are, you would think that he's one of those manufactured pop stars that a bunch of executive producers put together. But no, this guy wrote and composed and performed and produced this album as well as his debut album all by himself. And to give you a bearing of uh, where his sound sits, I uh, think uh, Jason Mraz, a bit more of a pop bent than Jason Mraz, but yeah, just one great song after another. Heartstrings is probably my favorite on here. Uh, USA is another good song, and uh, Who Gives a Damn is another one. I mean, just you know, pick any song on the album, it's going to be great. But yeah, uh, Steve Appleton with his album Colors is my number 31 favorite album of the 2010s. Oh, I'm exhausted. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's taken me, I think, three hours to do this video, and I hope it doesn't end up being too long. I actually ended up having more to say about every one of these albums than I thought I would. So, But anyway, uh, enough wasting time. Let's close out the video here. Uh, that does it for my bottom 70 of my top favorite albums of the decade. Stay tuned in the next video for my top 30, number 30 to number 1 of my 2010's favorite albums countdown. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe and healthy out there, everybody. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.